So I have tested every single cold email tool there is. So you don't need to waste your time or money figuring out which ones actually work. For context, we've booked over 3000 calls in the last 12 months for 50 plus agencies and a bunch of B2B companies as well. And in the last week alone, we've booked over 110 calls through cold email. So in this video, I'm gonna break down each tool we've tested, which ones actually work, and what are the must have tools when running cold outbound campaigns. By the way, I don't have any affiliate links with any of the tools in this video. I am friends with the owner of one of them, but I'll bring that up when we get to it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is email delivery or sending or sequencing tools. So these are the softwares that you're going to use to send emails. Okay. And this is where you attach a whole lot of email accounts. You write the email copy and it's going to then you upload your lead list and then it's going to send that email copy to the lead list through these email accounts. So there's two main ones in the space and I'd recommend both of them. The first one is instantly. We used instantly when we first got into cold email and I would recommend it to anyone, small or large. Um, they are very well known in the space, have a good reputation, and I don't know any major issues using them. We then moved to Smart Lead, and I would say it allows you to do slightly more with the API. So if you're looking to build out a more complex approach and automate more things, I would suggest going with Smart Lead. And then lastly, I've used Email Bison in the past as well. I have nothing bad to say about Email Bison. The reason why we moved back to Smart Lead after using Email Bison is because we use the master inbox to manage all replies. And that isn't as easy currently with Email Bison. So if you have a big master inbox where you want to deal with a whole lot of stuff coming in and build everything out, then you can use Email Bison, but you'd probably want to use another tool to help manage those replies. We've just built them out using the Smart Lead master inbox and it's okay it's not perfect sometimes stuff doesn't get pulled in properly sometimes the api doesn't fire for us i'm sure they're working to resolve all these things but we use smart lead at the moment i would also recommend looking at instantly if you're getting started i probably recommend instantly and then if you're wanting something a bit more technical that has fast updates probably a tighter community of people that you can talk with and, and uh, troubleshoot things i would say go with email bison so the next lot of tools i'm going to talk about are going to be lead finding or scraping tools so if you're doing local business scraping meaning that you've got let's say hairdressers electricians you know these sorts of things you're typically going to be wanting to scrape google or something that scrapes google Okay, so D7 Lead Finder is an OG in the space. It's okay. Like, it got a really bad rep for a long time, um, and that's kind of fair enough, but it's really cheap, and it's pretty good. So we use it as a backup. We use Phantom Buster to do most of our Google Maps scraping, and I really like Phantom Buster because instead of scraping for industry, let's say restaurant, you could scrape for restaurant with uh, garden bar, or you could say restaurant outdoor seating, let's say. And so you can scrape a more in-depth list because you can put in a full search term as opposed to just scraping by, by industry through Google. So that's why we like it. One reason I wouldn't recommend it is it's expensive. Um, and I'm sure there's cheaper ways to do it, and I'll talk about a cheaper way shortly. And then I've also got here scrap.io. So these are something that's cheaper, but when you use scrap.io, you're again gonna just be putting in one of these terms, right? Auto sunroof shop, right? So you're not writing your own search terms, which limits your ability to build fantastic lists, in my opinion. So it's a bit cheaper, so I think it's actually significantly cheaper than Phantom Buster, but you're more limited with how you can scrape Google Maps. And then there's building your own, which there's, I'm not going to dive into it in this video. That's probably something that we should be doing relatively soon, just because our costs with Phantom Buster are going up a lot. But if you're getting serious about local business scraping, building your own is something that I would also recommend looking into. So now I'm talking about like enterprise scraping. So this is where you want to find the marketing manager at certain companies or you're looking for head of HR because you want to offer you know, wellness retreats or something. Right? So 
if you're needing to find like C-suite or certain titles of businesses, or you're just going after larger businesses, then you're kind of going to want to be scraping stuff that scrapes from LinkedIn, or you're going to be using something like Zoom Info. So there's LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which I think everyone should be somewhat aware of, LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So you need to sign up for this. It's pretty hard to pull data from LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So what lots of people do is they'll use something like, I've got it up here, Scrup. So you'd use something like Scrup, which essentially means that you have your own Sales Navigator account, and then it's going to scrape certain search terms from your Sales Navigator account. So that's one option. Or you can, and there's heaps of these types of things, I thought they were a bit difficult and a bit limited, so I went with something like Apollo. So Apollo essentially pulls their data or generates their data, gets their data from something like LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It, it does get its data from LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So what you would do, and this is a bit of a hack, but I'm sure everyone knows this. Okay, so what you could then do in Apollo is let's say you're going to come and you want to find, for example, I'm going to find CEOs and founders All right, of, and let's just go, we're going to go just, just a random search of companies with 51 to whatever, All right? So you've got your list of people here. Then instead of essentially paying for Apollo, you'd use something like export Apollo. And you would go to export Apollo and you would then take this URL Right, you'd copy and paste it and you would put it into here and you would essentially pay them to pull that data. Why you'd do that is because it's just so much cheaper than using something like Apollo. That being said, if you're working for a client, they've already got an Apollo account, they want you to use it, then you can you can use their account. But I would recommend just using something like Export Apollo. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is Zoom Info. So we've had very personally, we've had really good results with Zoom Info. We don't pay for Zoom Info. We only use it if our clients already have Zoom Info. Why? Because it is extremely expensive. So it's just going to make your cost per acquisition that much higher. But if you're working with a client, let's say, and they've already got like a Zoom Info account, use that data. The data is good. So that's what I'll say on that. Next thing I want to talk about is e-com or technology. So essentially, there's certain platforms that allow you to put, pull data based off things on their website. So Store Leads is the main one for ecom data and i would say in my opinion it is better than something like built with for ecom data um that's just my opinion so this is where you can essentially say like hey i want to find all shopify stores that are doing selling footwear all right and that's going to pull you all those domains or you can use something like built with and built with is good because you can find out if they're using certain bits of software essentially installed on their website and then you can find those demands now one thing i will say is let's say you pull all of these people using a bit of software on their website right and then you want to find the email addresses what you can do is you can then you get that data you'd go to apollo as i was talking about before you would then come down into companies and you'd go to include a list of companies and then you would just copy and paste all the companies that you found with that website and then you'd click save and search and then you'd be able to find the people and their emails right so that's how you'd kind of do it right so you'd find let's say all the people all the domains with shopify stores selling what you want to what category you want so you're going to find all those domains then you're going to take that list of domains and you're going to put it into apollo and then you're going to click save and search and you're going to find the people at these companies that you want to talk to let's say the marketing managers of these companies right and then you're going to take your url and then you're going to go to something like export apollo and then you're going to put that in there and then it's going to scrape that data for you all right once you scrape that data you're then going to verify them and i'll talk about verification and then you're going to use something like clay to again double verify you would probably use clay first to double verify that they're a company you can help and then you'd use email verification credits to double check that their email is verified one thing i will say is when you're using apollo we always, we always will only scrape if the email status is verified. 
okay? And that's going to severely cut down the amount of people, let's say, on average, you know, it's going to take off like 40%, which is quite a lot. But I would also recommend doing that, okay? So now I'm going to talk about email verification tools. So we started with, actually, we started with Neverbounce, and then we moved to Million Verifier because at the time, Never Bounce, you paid for not just verified emails. So let's say you had 10 emails, you only verified five were verified, you'd pay for all 10. And so we moved to Million Verifier, who you'd only pay for verified emails. All right. And so we've had, we've enjoyed Million Verifier, it's been good, but we're now moving to Lead Magic. Why? Because I want to also be able to verify catch all emails because one of the issues that we have is if we've got a lead list of 10,000 and only like 5,000 of them are verified and we use that, that 5,000 up and we've, we're out of leads. So we want to be able to essentially enrich or try and capture riskier leads. So another way to say it is we want to have more coverage. We want to be able to get out of that 10,000 more of them verified. So lead magic is able to verify catch all emails. Okay. So we're going to look into essentially doing lead magic and I've had really good things, but just to be clear, we haven't moved over to them yet. We're still using Million Verifier. And then in terms of verification, I'd also recommend using Clay or you can build your own, but I'm just going to talk about Clay for now. Where essentially what you're going to do is you're going to pull in your domains and let's say you're going after roofers. You're pulling in all of the companies that you want to go after that are roofers and you're going to use Clay and I'll log into Clay and I'll show you. So these are all self-storage companies you're going to use clay and you're going to run this is just chat gpt for mini is this a storage company yes or no okay and it's going to go through and it's going to confirm that they're storage companies because you might find some of them are not storage companies and you don't want to email them because those are the ones that are going to mark you as spam because if they're not a storage company the email literally is spam so you want to both verify that the email is correct and you want to double verify that the company is someone you can help. Otherwise, your email is spam and they should market it as spam, okay? So you wanna verify it. Now, video personalization tools. So we do personalized video at scale. That's our specialty. That's what we've been doing for 18 months, two years. And we use Pitchlane and we've got a relationship with Ryan and we've had a good experience with Pitchlane, okay? So that I'm a bit biased there. So I'm just gonna share two other tools that we know of on the market. There's Weasley that does a similar thing and there's also send spark which i haven't used but i've had also decent things about so those are three sort of video personalization tools if you want to go down that route so analytics we use in and an ear table and build that out and that's probably what i would recommend you do too before that we've just used a google sheet as well to track our analytics but any of that would work so overall, useful tools. Um, something like Front can be used to manage the inbox instead of using the master inbox. And I've heard good things about people doing that. Again, we just use the master inbox with essentially NAN using a whole lot of automations on the back end from the smart. Uh, the smart lead API okay but if you wanted to do something different then you could use something like this to help manage the inbox again I've also just put in clay and NAN, NAN here I think that if you can get really good with NAN and clay and I would almost say more so NAN at the moment you're going to have a huge advantage over other people trying to solve outbound acquisition because you're just going to be able to do way more things automate way more things get way more stuff done do way more scale send way more volume and essentially get better results so those are kind of the extra tools that i would recommend on top of that so as mentioned earlier these are the exact tools that we've used to help book in thousands of calls for over 50 agencies so if you are looking for help booking calls for yourself then you can click the link below and book in a call with us and if you enjoyed this video, I would recommend you check out my last one where I covered how we send over 3,500 video emails every single day. Thank you for watching this video. Peace.